VGK's fourth line seals the deal in the third period as Aiden Hill and the defense douse the Flames in a 5 nothing Golden Knights win. Our recap comes your way next right here on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You could find us wherever you get your podcast. Please make sure to subscribe to our Locked On Golden Knights YouTube channel. And we are brought today uh, by FanDuel. FanDuel.com, that's the place to go. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Aiden Hill with a relatively light evening last night between the pipes with uh, 16 saves and the shutout. Pretty much now five consecutive periods of playing really good hockey, giving up just one goal during that span. VGK, a 5 to nothing shutout victory last night over Cal Gary. And you have to credit, offensively, the fourth line. Everybody. Uh, and what's that? Everybody. <laughs> yeah, everyone. But again, from the get-go, uh, I don't know if you saw this, but so Nick Waugh graded out the best on those uh, scorecards. Uh, and I picked him last night as, you know, one of my favorite nights uh, there in that game. And so from the get-go, Nick Waugh, Chris, with a huge screen in front of the net on the goal by Alex Petrangelo. Uh, hopefully fans did not uh, have that go unnoticed. VGK led 2 to nothing through a couple of periods of play in this game. Uh, the final period belonged to VGK's fourth line as Keegan Kolasar scored twice in the third, and he also had an assist. Kolasar uh, with a big night. Nick Waugh, three points as well a goal, and two helpers. Uh, the line was buzzing with the guy by the name of Cole Schwint on the wing against his former team. Does Is Hattrick one word or two words? Two. Okay, yeah, so I, I was right. My gra- I just want to make sure my grammar was correct when I said uh, four words I never thought I'd say in life. Keegan Cole or Colasar Hattrick watch. I never thought I'd tweet that, so that was kind of cool, number one. Um, I mean, listen, doing the little things right, I think we'll certainly start there. Um, on the first goal of the game, the Nick Wa- or the, the Nick Wah screen you referenced, um, you have a battle behind the nets, winds up on Carlson's stick. Carlson gets the puck to Petrangelo. Nick Wah gets to the gets to the front of the net, and boom, there you go. Um, one of the other goals as well, I'm drawing a blank on which one it was, but same exact thing happens where it's a battle won behind the net by a VGK player. Stone. And then the puck, it, it might have been, yeah, I'll check my tweets in a second here. But the point being is not to get lost on all the big things that are happening are the little things that the Golden Knights are doing right now. At some point, this is, has to slow down a little bit. But again, right now it's not slowing down, and that's a good thing. I mean, the Golden Knights shooting percentage is absolutely off, off the chart right now. And uh Maybe this is how the season's going to go. I mean, who knows? There's a lot of great things happening right now. But back to the game. Statement victory, Tony. I mean, listen, you and I were both wrong last night. Let's certainly eat some crow there. We both thought the Flames were going to be a tougher situation for the Golden Knights, which if you look at the at things leading up to the game, I think you and I probably both missed it, honestly, unless we were just both taking the perspective of, hey, they got to lose at some point. It's going to happen tonight. Fine, whatever. Um, but statement victory. Golden Knights beat a team that we thought was going to give them much harder fights. And Flames had no shot in that game whatsoever. No shot. BGK continuing to score. Can this continue this trend on the road now? That's the big question. I mean, it, sh- it should. I don't know why it shouldn't. But, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. You know, the Golden Knights had a hard time on the road. I mean, there's there's a lot of things happening right now. We can save some for tomorrow, I'm sure. But a lot of great things happening with this team right now, starting with the fact that when they came home from the the roadie, they went back to the, the common defensive pairings from the previous season. And that seems to have helped things a little bit as well. So, you know, there was uh, there was cautious optimism in the first homestand. 
team goes on the road and it was okay maybe this is the real golden knights and then they come back home and they're they they're averaging a touchdown a game at home right now on this on this homestand it feels like so you know it's um it's 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 interesting it's cautious optimism still i'm not changing my stance a whole lot but i will certainly concede that uh the needle's been moved a little bit aiden hill last night uh the defense in front of him blocked 23 shots so actually 16 made it through uh the one shot that it hit him in the neck area yeah the stack uh this what was i gonna say yeah it broke whatever on his uh, face mask something uh it so, looked like it did but i think i think i think it all, everything held on he, he doesn't wear a neck guard though. no he doesn't wear the neck no guard, but it looked like no the neck buckle. guard so okay so the buckle there that's a good word that i was trying to get out uh let's talk about his performance because he's been much maligned in the early parts of this season and the defense though has to also be given a lot of credit last night yeah, I mean, listen, this, this the Golden Knights, the identity starts with the defense no matter what, whether, you know, whether things are going well or not. But everything with the Vegas Golden Knights starts with this uh, six player defensive core. Now, obviously, Sands, Nicholas, Haig, um Korzak comes in. He's, you know, they're, there's, they're not missing a beat right now. I wonder about Ben Hutton. Um, we're talking about the defense for a second here. It's. I get why Korzak got in there when a righty is out, but now that a lefty is out, the fact that Korzak is still getting the minutes, I wonder which, what that means about Hutton's long term with the Golden Knights here. Maybe yeah, you've mentioned he might get traded. Maybe it is going to yeah. happen. I don't know. Um, but the defensive core, great job last night. Listen, Aiden Hill, 16 shots. He made 16 saves. That's a good thing. Um, it, it's a confidence builder, right? You know, the entire fan base starting from this podcast has been all over him, you know, so. Aiden Hill gets a clean sheet last night. Confidence builder going to the road. And it's a reminder from Samsonoff. It'll push him a little bit now, obviously, to continue to perform. Not that there's an internal issue or anything like that between those two, but it's good when two goalies are pushing each other. Aiden Hill gets a shutout. So Samsonoff, I'm guessing, is probably going to go on Wednesday. So we'll see if Samsonoff can uh, can uh, raise the stakes a little bit with Aiden Hill. Cassidy went out of his way in the postgame presser last night to praise Aiden Hill as well. Uh, Colasar and Wa, they scored 15 seconds apart. And uh, last night, both of those two players were plus four in the game. So that is really a positive sign as VGK, and we'll talk about it later on. Uh, but now they're playing and rolling four lines a lot more efficiently. Uh, VGK now 7-0 and at home. And is this a result of so many home games? And a rig schedule. Here we go. There it is. Early in this early in the season. No, you just have to wonder because why they start off so well? Well, they play so many uh, home games to start off a season. I'm not taking anything away from them. Then they go on the road and things start to even out. Under Cassidy, seven two and one this season. Uh, all the wins again at home. They started off nine zero and one through ten last season and eight and two in Cassidy's first season. But we've seen that uh, post-Thanksgiving sort of collapse with this team. And how, oh, I'm going to use that word for the first time this season. Is this sustainable? All right, a lot of things there to digest. Uh, number one, I got plus three for for Colasar and Juan and, and company on 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 the score sheet last night. Oh, so they took one plus down. They took one away. They, they, had, they, they had, a, had, a, had a scoring adjustment. I don't know. Um, so hang on a second. Hang on a second. The three goals, the three goals that were scored, uh, Colasar two, one Wa, and then uh, the other goal that uh, Wa was in front of the net. I see four goals there. They didn't give up any goals. It's a plus four. I will challenge this to my death, bro. Was there a power play in one of those? I don't recall. Was there? If I don't know. Power play doesn't event. count. You, you you can only go minus on a power play. You can't go plus. Um, all right. Either way, who cares? Moving on from that. Yeah, who cares? Let's go. <laughs> Moving on from that. All right. So the, the hot starts with Cassidy. Um, this is a trend. Why is it a trend? Cassidy knows no one else does. Um why the why some of Cassidy's teams seem to have a poor middle third of the season that's also something that Cassidy needs to address and maybe it, ha it will be addressed right now I mean 
this is certainly it's good, right? I mean, I was pissed off after the Tampa and Florida games because the Golden Knights left no, le- you know, at least one point on the table, more, more, more or less two points on the table when you factor that loss against uh, hmm. against uh, against Tampa. I mean, could have been three points if you want to say they screwed themselves up in the Florida Panthers game. So whatever, moving past that. Um, Home cooking, it's good. They, they've been a, a definitely a benefactor of circumstance. We certainly talked about this. It's been a very soft start to the home schedule, but so what? They're winning the games, Tony. They don't, I mean, I guess they do maybe if you talk to Tony's side of it, but the Golden Knights don't necessarily control who's coming in. They don't control when they come in. They just play the games I know. on the side. I know, Tony, you go, you can say it. I'm just saying it my way. I know, Tony. I know, I know you're getting it's, upset. It's over become there. a trend. It's become a trend every year. Are you kidding me? Become a trend was where they play these games early in the season against uh, teams that played seven straight on the road to start a season <laughs> against teams that played three out of four against back to back teams. You got to be kidding me, bro. Are you there? Yeah, I, I wanted you to keep flapping your jaw for a second. I want to drink. No, more I coffee just wanted now. to stir. I, I needed to stir the pot a little. No, listen, I get it. There's a lot of things going on right now. And. <clears throat> However, the Golden Knights got the schedule, so be it. If there's a, if there's a saving grace also in all this, the Pacific, uh, at least right now, seems like it's going to be relatively soft. The entire West, honestly, seems like it's going to be somewhat soft outside of, obviously, Vegas gets their honorable mention, as does the Winnipeg Jets, as do the Dallas Stars. And Winnipeg outside of those three, right? what's that? Winnipeg, Winnipeg lost last night. Oh, okay. Well, then, then forget the Winnipeg Jets. They're terrible. Yeah, they're Shots won, so, they're, so they're, they're the team to watch out for now. I get it. Um so, you know, there's a lot of things happening right now, and it's early. I mean, we're eight, eight nine games into the season right ten, now. Ten, ten. Game, ten games into the season. Fine, whatever. Ten games into the season. Um, maybe we'll do like a ten-game checkpoint tomorrow. I'll put that on the napkin. Uh, really fast before we cut out of here, Nazim Kadri is still trash, by the way. Oh, yeah, he, the Slufa. He, he, well, first before that, he takes uh, the accidental on purpose run at Aiden Hill, and Aiden Hill just dropped him. That was nice to see, and Hill was ready to – keep on hitting him a couple of times so good on Aiden Hill for that Hill said that he didn't say another word to him he didn't say anything to him after after he popped him one yeah no that's good I mean it It was fun listen there's goalies to mess with in the NHL Aiden Hill's not one of them I don't think um and then after that the slew foot on 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 Hannafin like when Hannafin went down and twisted in real time it, it wasn't natural like he didn't go down because of a hockey play and then that replay. I wish, like, this is where I, I wish the broadcast would have uh, would have just brought a little more attention to that. You know, a little more home cooking on the broadcast. No, they, it was really no. kind of they, they kind of went by it. Oh, they got tangled. Like it didn't real. I don't know. That's a slew foot. That that's a slew foot. Um, and then who was it that hit that got Schwint with the elbow? With with the head contact, where he looked like he might have been concussed afterwards. Like this is something that drives me nuts in the NHL. They're only looking at the results of plays when it comes to supplement. Not only, but a lot of the times when it comes to supplemental discipline. If Cole Schwinn were to go down and, and you know, let, let's get graphic for a second, get put on the backboard in the stretcher, now we're talking a sus- suspendable hit here. But since he shook it off and doesn't seem to have any ill effects, at least not immediately, no big deal. Give him two for head contact and move on. If you want this stuff to stop, you have to call the action, not the results. I'm going to go back to Bruce Cassidy on the bench in that interview in the second period against Ottawa, where he said, it's coming, it's coming. Like, just be patient. It's coming. And, okay. he, you know, listen, Cassidy saw, knows his team. No, Cassidy knows without, his team. without a doubt, without a doubt. And he saw that something good was starting to materialize with VGK. And here they go. And uh, they came back and won that game. Uh, and that was against all odds. And then, now they're starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm and into a groove. And one of the players that's in a groove early on is Alex Petrangelo. We talk about his hot start as we return here on this edition of Lockdown Golden Knights. Fans, we are brought to you today by FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book and the official partner of Lockdown Golden Knights. So when you have a hunch in the middle of the game, You can check it out, check out the latest stats, view live, play-by-play, and so much more on the same page, and that's where you place the bets. You can check it out there. And to get you started, we have $200 in bonus bets. That's right, guaranteed 
when you place your initial $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com, FanDuel.com. And, of course, uh, you know, I've been kind of quiet since I told you. My Yankees, I thought that people were just touting their pitching just a little bit too much. They didn't have good pitching, and I knew that. And this is coming back to haunt them. And then the bats went silent, uh, kind of like uh, Gallic when I bring up some of the topics here and all that. So don't forget, check out FanDuel.com. You can bet on World Series, game number four, and much, much more. Go to FanDuel.com and start off the season big at America's number one sports book. And we are also brought to you today by Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL, $20 off of your first purchase. So many terrific features they have there. And, uh, you know, the Dodgers, remember, they did that special where fans uh, could go down to Arizona. And uh, Labor Day weekend it was. I hope they do more cool things like that because fans got 50% off of tickets uh, to go to that game and see Otani and all that and uh, perhaps the World Series champions, the world champions not just the series. And they've got all sorts of curated deals there on game time, super deal, seat views before you buy. The lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, much, much more. They have uh, all-in pricing. So when you talk about all-in pricing, you have to talk about, you have to turn on this feature before it begins. And then uh, you can see everything all in uh, the pricing. So there's really no uh, questions when you check out. And the game time ticket coverage, your purchase covered by the most flexible customer uh, service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets today with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use the promo code locked on NHL, $20 off of your first purchase. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. Back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. A little bit long-winded there, bro. Uh, we appreciate yeah, you yeah. tuning in. Thanks. Why are you wearing uh, the colors there of the Avalanche? Whoa! This is our this is our youth team, the Young Guns. Come on, man. The this Young is Guns. Okay. Team. Our youth okay. team. I got you there. Uh, did you pick out had the a good colors? practice yesterday? Had a good practice yesterday. Worked on uh, some net front presence and getting goals out of the bumper position. We had a good practice. Worked hard. Oh, that's okay. Did Tomas Hurdle show up and kind of? No, no, no. no. He he was invited, but bumper. he had to be a, he had he had he had prior obligation. Don't forget on Fridays it's WTF on Saturdays the Chris Times Chris Junior Show, and uh, oh man, so why are why are VGK fans so spicy? Get rid of these guys on, <laughs> on Locked On. When there's a win, it's almost like they're trying to taunt us if we pick the other side. I've been pretty much, hey, my record proves I've been much better than I was last season, last couple of seasons uh, with my predictions. But I just thought Cal Gary would come in here and play a better game. VGK's Alex Petrangelo. Uh, he scored the first goal of uh, the game last night. It was his first goal of the season. He has 11 assists. And get this, he is plus 10 now on the season. Of course, you'll check the stats. It'll be plus 9. Plus um, 10. He's got 9 points on the homestand. And now becoming, and hey, let's face it, and let's be honest, it's been a little bit of a challenge because he started off with Shea Theodore. Um, I think you were talking about uh, the other day about uh, some confusion even with him and Noah Hannafin. It has not been perfect, but it has been, uh, well, on the defensive end, but it has been offensively for Alex Petrangelo. Yeah, I mean, listen, I I was very excited when I saw the line, the defensive pairings uh, breaking camp. I thought it was some great changes, and... um. It wasn't. I guess I'm not. I guess I'm not an NHL hockey coach. Uh, credit Coach Cassidy for trying something, and then not being as egotistical to the point where he was going to stick to it and make it work. He made a nice change. And Cassidy, we we've talked about Tony. He's not afraid to change on the fly. He's not afraid to make a wholesale change if uh, the opportunity is needed. So I mean, there's a lot of great things to credit for this hot star of the season. I think a lot of it does start with Cassidy. It goes deep it with McCrimmon. Cassidy. For... It doesn't start with, no, it doesn't start with uh, McSee. 
Here it's we go. Start, go ahead. Cassidy's done a terrific job. No matter who's been on the ice, he's done it with AHLers. He's proven to me that he is a really good coach. And absolutely. Oh, no doubt. And you make adjustments on the fly. That's what's so good. And Chris, it's coming, man. Just be patient. It's coming. I think I literally just said that. <laughs> um, all right. So shifting to Petrangelo here, like you said, I mean, nine points, four games, uh, 33 plus points. <laughs> what's that? Is he plus? Is he plus 10? He's plus 10. He's plus 10. Okay. Um, didn't take one away. Didn't take one away. Petrangelo played 64 games last season, 33 points. Um, before that, um, the, the, the 54 points in 73 games, which is a career high. And at this point, uh, Petrangelo is going to put himself in the Norris consideration if he's not careful if he keeps doing this here. Um, so this is very nice to see Petrangelo finding a way because, listen, Tony, you you don't got to go too many pod, too many of our shows without us dogging Petrangelo, especially in the offseason and, and such. It's been a roller coaster ride, to say the very least. And he looked a step slow defensively. No, we've had some. If we're going to compare it to a roller coaster ride, it's going okay. to be New York, New York. No, 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 no. Not, not a herky jerky roller coaster. I think it'd be more of like kind of like a boring roller coaster ride where, you know, it's not necessarily going to make you sick. There's no loops. It's, you know, lazy it's, river of it's roller the, coasters. the original Colossus, the original Colossus over at Valencia, Six Flags. The original yeah, class like kind of steep. No, no, it's like an 80 foot okay. drop. It's not that steep. Oh, not that um, it, it's you know, it, it, what I mean when I say that is Petrangelo is who he is. He's a mobile defenseman. He doesn't do a lot of things great, but he does a lot of things very well, including playing 22, 23 minutes a game. Well, now he's playing those 22, 23 minutes a game and becoming a, a points machine, as uh, as T in turn said in our graphic up there. So, you know, it's certainly very nice to see. And again, this will transition a little bit into our uh, our uh, third segment here. But the Golden Knights are getting contributions now from so many places in this lineup. Um, I know for a fact that NHL teams were preparing for the Golden Knights being a one line team. Uh, when the season started, as far as their pre-scout and stuff goes. Well, now that's changed a little bit. So certainly good to see in Petrangelo. I mean, it's not just about what he's doing on the ice. He's very vocal on the bench. He's certainly a locker room presence as well as a locker room leader. And the fact that he's doing all these things well, it becomes infectious. And now when the puck is on his stick, when he's taking these uh, – these shots, you're expecting it to go into the net or create a scoring opportunity as it did beyond, obviously, the first goal that he scored. Well, you were the one. I have to go back to this because uh, I know over the summer you said leadership and Keegan Colasar in the same sentence. And they were asking him about it again last night post game. I, 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 I beat everyone to the punch there. I will. I'll, 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 I'll cheers on that one. I beat no, everyone to the did. punch on that. One. I don't know where you saw this leadership coming from, but he's really stepped up. And they said, oh, they were Fort talking about veteran grinder. Easy to see. Easy. They were talking about that Jack Eichel gets some credit because of the curved stick now that Colasar <laughs> uses and gets more left. Was he using a flat blade before? I mean, what are we talking about? I don't here? know what he was doing before. I don't think he was shooting the puck other than up in 220. I think it landed up there a few times. Uh, and then uh, Cassidy called last night the best defensive performance of the season. Yeah. And uh, no odd man rushes allowed last night. So wow. that is really big for VGK. They've come a long way in transition. Uh, they're doing a better job through the neutral zone. And they are scoring. Uh, they're scoring goals in transition. And they're playing a more sped up game now offensively. Yeah, I mean, we can go on and on here about all the all the great things that are happening. Going back to the second period of last night's I game, I mean, it out. I said some negative things. I'm so negative. <laughs> the Flames couldn't even get across the red line last night. I mean, they could not get across the red line. I think they had a small handful of shots in the second period. Credit the Flames; they actually did find their game late in the second and in pockets of the third. But the Golden Knights uh, weathered those storm, weathered the storm, and were able to. To pull away. So the, the Flames, like it wasn't a dead game for the Flames last night. I think the Golden Knights played really, really well. But the Flames did have some life, at least early on. Nice to see uh, some former uh, former faces in the building. Pahal, Miramanov, and, um, and man, 
uh, whatever to him. But the other two yeah. guys are kind of cool. So did they do a tribute video? They did. A, I think a quick. I don't think it was a video. I think it was just a quick tears? graphic welcome back. Yeah. Oh wow! Were there any tears shed? No. I doubt it highly. It I wasn't like it. Stamkos, and no, they didn't do three players taking a lap. No. No, it was pretty quick and easy. It was pretty quick yeah. and painless. Um, so listen, a lot to like about the game. Just kind of going back here and uh, you know watching Petrangelo become a driver of this offense certainly isn't a bad thing either. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Is he taking the spot of Noah Hannafin before we go to break? There, as far as what they projected out of Hannafin offensively. I mean, he's taking the spot of Jack Eichel as far as what projections <laughs> offensively. Um, listen, Hannafin, we haven't seen him on the score sheet a lot, but they're perfect I at think home Hannafin needs just two he, losses in regulation. So that he Hannafin's got curve, time right now. He needs the curve stick. That's what Hannafin needs the curve stick. Be. He needs his righty stick also. Give him a righty stick. Coming up next, we will talk about VGK's improved depth scoring. We'll get to that as we return here on this edition of Lockdown Golden Knights. What is Prize Picks? Prize Picks, the best place to get real money sports action. That's right, there's over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money, as we mentioned. And again, it's pretty amazing with over 10 million users. And just sign up today. Uh, Prize Picks invented the uh, something called the flex play. It means that you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money even if one of your picks does not come through. Prize Picks puts its members first. And I really have to appreciate this with all these shenanigans going on out there. All of the withdrawals are fast. They're safe, most importantly, and they're secure. And when your picks hit, you can get your money in as quick as 15 minutes. So that is really appreciated. And that is solid. So sign up today. You get $50 instantly when you play just $5. You don't even need to win to receive your $50 bonus. It is guaranteed. Prize picks is the best way to win real money this football season. Which players are going off? Which ones are not? Make your picks today in less than 60 seconds. Turn your sports opinions into real money all season long. Again, download the app today. Use that promo code locked on NHL. Get $50 instantly when you play $5. It's prize picks. Back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick reporting from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. And you could find us wherever you get your podcast. You did not have just not even one comment about the 45 adapter on the shirt. You don't even know what 45. You don't know what this is. You've never it's seen a yellow this. blob. You don't it looks know like a fidget is. spinner. It is. It's a fidget spinner. I have no idea what that even is. Did you ever see 45 records? Oh my gosh, yes, you are young. Absolutely. And you put they that were around. Adapter. They didn't have jagged edges, like whatever that crap was on your shirt. Okay. You put the adapter in the middle. That's this. And that's how you put it on the good old Victrola. On the what? You never had it. No. Okay. You never saw one of these adapters. Yeah, see? An adapter? No. Okay. Speaking of adapting, don't forget Fridays, WTF, Saturdays, the Chris and Chris Jr. show. Wow. Dude, like, you never played records when you were a kid. No? On the Very record rarely. Player? Very rarely. Okay. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm then, the cassette era, Tony. Tony. I'm the, I'm the, I'm I'm the small, pencil and the eraser in the cassette to rewind it era. So they have these small records, right? Let me just yeah, let talk it out here real fast. And then yeah, fast. I'm the A-side. And you are the B side. You're no, the you're B definitely side. the A side. Definitely. I'm definitely the A side. Yeah, and then you put side that in with there. Roll for you, you but yeah. Put it on the record player. You put the needle on the record, put the needle yeah. on the record. Yeah. 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 And it just played. It was a, just one song. Remember, one song on each side. Flip it. Okay. Pearl Jam, let the record play. Good song, by the way. And spin the black circle if we're going to talk about uh, throwbacks to records and stuff. 
as we mentioned yesterday, VGK has goals from a lot of players now, points from several players. I think uh, with the Petrangelo goal last night, I think that is now 17 different goal scorers on this team. What has made a difference with so many players contributing? Well, first of all, you know, Cassidy had to mention last night <clears throat> chemistry. He did mention chemistry, but that wasn't the focal point. He said the fact that this team is healthy, they're playing better uh, five on five. They're playing really well. Um, he said that they're playing hard on pucks. And other than Carlson, who against San Jose, um, VGK is sharing the puck. I had to go there. It was wide open. No, I get it. I, I get it. I get it. I mean, uh, listen, we were you talking. Adapter, we were talking early in the season about that top line and all the points that they had and everything that was happening. And it was good, but nothing else was happening. All right, fine. Mark Stone, 18. Eichel, 16. Petrangelo, 12. Petrangelo, 12 points. Barbashev, 12. And then here we go. Tomas Hurdle up to 10 points. Shea Theodore, uh, been a little bit slower, 8 points, 9, game, nine games, missed one game. Um, oh, he doesn't have to play well. He's got a new contract, doesn't he? <laughs> hey, listen, I'm glad. So Some people do the opposite when they get paid, Tony, especially football players. So certainly nice to see Theodore you know, still playing well with having $50 million in the bank. So that certainly is a good thing. Um, and then, again, depth players now. Dorfee of seven points. Nicholas Wa seven points. Keegan Colasar, seven points. God, he's got to be getting close to a career mark already in, uh, in game number 10 of the season. I'm not even joking about Howden's that. Howden's playing well. Wa. I yeah, mean, I mean, and it's not just what you're seeing on the score sheet, but it's the way they are on the ice. And credit Cassidy for Schwint and Brisson out. I think that definitely increases the identity of that line. And, oh, by the way, look what that line did when uh, Brisson was taken out. And I'm not knocking Brisson as a player. He's not a fourth-line player. He is not an energy grinder, checking type of player. I think Brisson could do very well on the, on the top two lines with the Golden Knights. So, I mean, or on the top line. I mean, another segment for the Napkin, Tony, is uh, players on the right wing of uh, – of Jack Eichel when, uh, you know, having career seasons and everything and career seasons is another thing for the napkin, Tony. Hopefully you got some, uh, some, uh, lead in that, in that, uh, pencil over there. So good to see, especially the fourth line getting goals. A point that I made earlier in the season was when the golden Knights were a one trick pony for a little bit. I think you, if called, you, them, have, you called them a one trick Tony. A one, exactly, a one trick, a one turning trick, Tony. Exactly, um, but when you get to two lines rolling, now you have three and four lines rolling. If just one line is rolling, the other team's top two defensive units are going to create, a, you know, lineup matchup wise, and that's going to be difficult for that top line to continue to do what they're doing. But now, when you have at least two lines scoring, now the Golden Knights have four lines. But when you have at least two lines contributing. Now you're rolling four lines through the lineup. Now you're getting contributions from up and down the lineup. The other team's defense doesn't know who to defend as far as what to prioritize. And then now you're getting mismatches when the second, third, and now the fourth lines are out there against these other teams right now. So uh, quick quick uh, trip in L.A. when they get when, when, they get, when the, the Kings will be coming in off a of back-to-back against the red-hot San Jose Sharks. And then Red Hot San Jose Sharks, Red Hot, Red Hot. Um, and then uh, let's reconvene as far as what we think the Golden Knights truly will be after they get some games on the road and once they start playing some tougher opponents. We're going extra long today because why well, we are both very much extra. But VGK is averaging five goals a game this season. But they had a graphic last night. The game night. goes under last night with VGK scoring five last night. What I know, right? The over, over I know. Well, I thought Cal Gary would live up to their end of the bargain. But get this. This is a I straight. Thought he would live up to his end of the bargain, too. This is a state-run graphic last Here night that Here I was go. impressed with. Uh, five goals a game, but VGK is 17th. So they lead the league in scoring goals. But they are 17th in shots taken. And 28th That's crazy. In shot attempts. Again, crazy. But five goals they're averaging. I have an explanation for that. And shots taken, 28th in shot attempts. So those shots that they're getting are high danger shots. 
and led by Mr. Barbershop, Barbershop, you saw that, they did look the caption there, uh, led by him, like, I mean, it's just, they're getting the easy shots, and they're doing it, again, hard on pucks, net front presence, and also Cassidy last night crediting a lot of the passes have been just stick to stick, tape to tape, right there in the slot, and they've been easier finishes for VGK. Their passing, I think, is something. Oh, napkin time passing. Okay, go ahead, wrap it up. Uh, Tomorrow's show is going to be sixty minutes with all these topics we got. All right, so very very quickly here, the Florida Panthers massively outshot the Vegas Golden Knights in that game. And a point that I made about that game wasn't the fact that the Florida Panthers had all these shots, but it's reminding everyone that the Golden Knights are very much a transitional hockey team. Yes, they can cycle and they can do that stuff too, but Golden Knights very, very, very potent when it comes to the transition game. And when you get those transition opportunities, usually it's just one shot. Usually it's a high danger opportunity, whether it's something off of the odd man rush or breakaway, whatever it is. So those are going to be obviously much better scoring chances. We're not in the Pete DeBoer Vegas Golden Knights era where, hey, we had 48 shots on goal. It just wasn't our night. The puck wasn't finding the back of the net. That's obviously garbage, and that's not the winning a championship formula. Quality grade A's, whether it's those shots from the bumper like Tomas Hurdle is getting, whether it's these odd man rushes like Colasar and Nick Wah, the way they converted their goals last night, those – that is just a staple of Vegas Golden Knights hockey, those transitional opportunities and how quick they get the puck from uh, from defending to attacking. Of course, uh, we'll talk more about this tomorrow and this upcoming. Launch, launch. They have got a one-off uh, there in L.A. We'll talk about, we'll be previewing the Kings game tomorrow. Uh, 39-16 VGK home scoring advantage. 39-16. We appreciate everyone tuning in. Of course, on Fridays, it's WTF. Saturdays, it's the Chris and Chris Jr. Show. Longest show ever today. We appreciate everyone, especially the everydayers. Again, we'll talk to you tomorrow. For my man, Chris Golick, I am Tony Cardasco, reporting from Las Vegas. Break out your 45 RPM records, and please take care.